The only thing that's been making noises on my side is a 12-pound chihuahua named Godzilla that's... Unfortunately, she does not come with a do not disturb mode. Have you tried flipping her over? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Quentin Pongratz and Gwen so we can talk about the Pixel 3. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO56. Uh, oh, before we start talking about the Pixel 3, actually, uh, I've got a little update for you. Um, the Project Fi review that we published uh, almost two years ago, I believe, um, Project Fi is Google's uh, cellular provider and or cellular service, and they've come out with quite a few updates to the service in the last year. Uh, so we published a short little... Uh, update on on that so if you listened to the original review and uh, need to know what the what the new stuff is go back and listen to uh, second opinion number 13 again Um, we put the updates right there in the uh, in the episode Um, and that's actually kind of related to what we're reviewing today because the pixel 3 is of course uh, google's flagship phone and uh, the one that I'm sure that they would prefer people use if they're using Project Fi. Um, So, Quentin and Gwen, uh, you guys both bought the Pixel 3. Um, Gwen, I think you got it, like, right at launch, right? I got it launch day, yep. Yeah. Um, Quentin, when did you you get yours? Um, I don't know, maybe about a month ago now. Okay, yeah. I got mine um, on the day that they, like announced that Project Fi was becoming Google Fi because they had a special deal on that one day where they would give you like um, some gift cards equal to the value of the phone uh, if you bought a phone on that day. So that's like the only reason that I have a Pixel 3 um, because I had the Pixel 2 and I didn't feel like I really needed to upgrade. Uh, But free phone is a free phone. So did you actually get the gift cards? Um, yeah, so I, I, the phone has to be active on Project Five for like I think it's like two or three months or something, and then I get the gift cards. So that's a question for future Ian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm I'm you know pretty sure that they're not going to screw me over. May you sure. say that? Oh, <laughs> uh, that'd be really that'd be really unfortunate because that would be nine hundred and fifty dollars down the drain. So yeah, pricing. Uh, these phones start at eight hundred dollars for the the regular size Pixel uh, at sixty four gigabytes, and then um, you add a hundred dollars if you want to get more storage, and you add a hundred dollars if you want to get the XL size. Um, so how do we feel about that pricing scheme? Um, a huge thumbs down. It is incredibly expensive. Um. I'm kind of upset that I bought it uh, as soon as it came out. Actually, I pre-ordered it the day of the announcement because mm. I had an old Moto X4, and that thing was uh, a yeah. hot piece of garbage. So I was like, get me out of this thing. Um, so I missed out on all the good deals that came around later. Um, plus, I got so excited that I didn't do the trade-in at the beginning, and I, oh. I couldn't trade my phone in afterwards because you get one chance to turn your phone in and i didn't do it (laughs) one chance that's it but uh yeah so google was going to give me 72 dollars for it or something which you know i think is exactly as much as it's worth (laughs) but i went on to like swappa and there's people selling my exact version for like 200 bucks so Mm -hmm. i just need to find out what box i went into and then sell it online that's so weird because like when i think was it last year when they started doing the the trade in deals on Project Fi? Um, like the the Nexus Five X, which was you know like a two year old phone by that time, uh, and had the boot loop problem, and so it was basically a ticking time bomb. You know they were giving you like two hundred bucks for for the Nexus Five X, and I was like, oh yeah, okay, let's do that. <laughs> but if they're man, the X, the Moto X Four was only. They were only giving you like seventy four bucks. Seventy two dollars. That's it. I was pretty mad because I spent like four hundred on it when it came out or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of that's how I feel about like this year in in phone prices in general. Is like all three of our major 
flagship players, Google, Samsung, and Apple. Like they both, like all three of them just suddenly jumped to this like near a thousand dollar price point. And like, I really miss the days when like the $400 mid tier was really popping. And we had, you know, like the Nexus 5 came out, the 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 OnePlus One came out. Um, you know, we had like a couple of years there where it was just like, oh, you can get amazing phones for like 400 bucks. Uh, and that's, I, I just don't feel like that's the case anymore. Um, and I, I, I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I certainly wouldn't be getting the phone or have gotten the phone if they didn't have like a financing thing mm-hmm. on the Project Fi, which makes it kind of less painful to pay that much for a phone. <laughs> but Yeah, that and that spreads the cost out over, what is it, 12 months or 24 months? Uh, two years, so 24 months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also did that this time around. Uh, I just didn't have the money up front, but happy to uh, pay it now. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. It's zero percent interest, and there's no fees, so why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like usually when you when you get that kind of deal through a carrier, it's like, oh yeah, you're like you're gonna be locked into this contract for the two years that you're paying this thing off and everything, and like the phone's gonna be locked into this carrier. Uh, by the way, do not buy like the locked Verizon version of the Pixel Three. Just don't <laughs> do it. If you if even if you use Verizon, just buy the unlocked version and then put a Verizon SIM card in it, and like you'll be so much happier because you'll actually be able to resell the phone. Yeah. If you value <laughs> your life, you won't buy the Verizon version. <laughs> <laughs> I will hunt you down and find you. Uh, so let's talk about the the phone itself. Um, the let's talk about the screen first. The display. Um, they they've bumped up the screen size this year. Um, we've we're we now have a five point five inch display for the regular size Pixel Three and a six point three inch display uh, on the XL size. Both of them at uh, roughly a two to one aspect ratio. Um, and both of them have like significantly narrower bezels, so like the the footprints of the phones haven't increased much. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but yeah, uh, we do have a notch on the XL version, uh, which Quentin, I think you're the only one out of the three of us who has the XL. Oh. So h- how are you liking that notch? Um, I don't know. I don't mind it. I don't get it a whole lot. I guess it's nice to have hmm. that uh, extra space there that the notifications can just be shoved up into, mm-hmm. I guess. But like all the rest of the apps, if you're in full screen anyways, it kind of cuts off there because it can't really, if you're watching videos or something, it can't really dig into the video. So they've got to you know draw the line next to it anyways. So it doesn't really feel right. like I'm getting a whole lot more screen space. Okay, yeah. So it so it feels like instead of having a six point three inch display, it feels like you've got like a six inch display, <laughs> and then every once in a while you kind of get this extra point three inches that just has a clock. Yeah, yeah, and, and notification. Okay, <laughs> like if more apps were to like kind of incorporate into a design, it'd probably be nice. But I mean, why would you mm-hmm. do that if you were an hey. app maker? <laughs> I haven't heard anybody complain about an extra 0.3 inches. <laughs> <laughs> now you have, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. No, I'm I'm not complaining about it. I'm just kind of ambivalent towards the whole issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't think it was very necessary, so I went with the cheaper non-notched version. Mhm. Yeah. And and like the the physical size of the regular size phones is like what I that, that that's about my ideal size anyway so like i would never have gone with the xl version anyway mm. yeah see i was at the non xl for the pixel one and i re- mm-hmm. i regretted it the whole time i was there <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i i did i thought that it was going to feel weird having like a 2 to 1 aspect ratio instead of a 16 by 9 but i actually i really appreciate having like this really tall especially when i'm like reading stuff on the screen you know just you you just have so much more real estate to just have this long flowing text from top to bottom um and like you know if i if i'm you know reading an ebook and it's got you know a pure black background with some white text on it and it just feels like the entire surface of the phone is my display even though 
it's not an edge to edge display, you know. But you can't really tell because like it's an AMOLED. So so the blacks are truly black and they just blend in with the bezels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like the rounded corners that they gave these displays. Like I I wasn't expecting that to be something that I would fall in love with, but like these the rounded corners that they've got up there match like perfectly with the rounded corners of the phone's body itself and then they also match with like the rounded corners of like the notification tray and so it's just it feels like these kind of nested like rounded corners within rounded corners um and i feel it, it just it makes it feel like a really cohesive design uh all the way from the software on out to the hardware um and that like that continues on to the back as well you know they've got because typical pixel phones right they've got like the reflective glass in the you know upper fourth of the phone and then the rest of it's kind of you know this more matte finish and the the like transition between those two has rounded corners uh so that's like oh you know they really thought this through like all the way to the back of the phone as well yeah i can't say that i ever really noticed that just because i don't know if i care that much about the whole design of the phone (laughs) but now that you pointed out it does look nice (laughs) likewise (laughs) <laughs> and i i also just happened to like i bought like a ten dollar slim case for this and but like the case also has rounded corners on this like uh you know the two like kind of two different textures on the back of the case and it you know the transition between those two has rounded corners it's like oh my gosh everybody was paying attention to this thing <laughs> did you uh <laughs> what brand of cell phone cover did you get uh spigen spigen i don't know how you yeah, pronounce spigen, that i think yeah i got that okay. one as well i've had their cases for like my last three phones i mm-hmm. really like their cases um they're very slim fitting and um, i think this is their best phone yet because of the mm. case yet because it is like on there and it is tough for me to get the phone in and out of it yeah yeah I for the last couple of phones that I had, uh, I went with Google's like live cases where you can upload mm-hmm. a picture to the to the service and then get that printed on a case. Um, but for some reason this year they took away like the slim case option for that. They Lame. only have like yeah, and that's what I prefer. So I was like, uh, do I get the Nexus logo again or do I, act, you know, give my hands a break? And <laughs> so I decided that yeah, I I needed to look out for my own well being. Um, I felt like the, the color settings that came by default on the phone were way too saturated. Um, I was kind of like burning my eyes out looking at the, the like really bright colors. Uh, so I had to change, go into like the, the system settings and change it from what they call adaptive to boosted. Um, and now, now I think that the colors look pretty good on the display. Um, but they were, oof. So they're I, pretty intense. I saw your note on that, and I mm-hmm. went in and changed it as well, and I haven't noticed a dang difference. <laughs> 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 I guess I'm not as tuned in to the the color scheme thing, but I maybe I can't say that I've noticed a difference either. Uh, I didn't change it, but um, I have night mode on my phone most of the time, so it's some sort mm-hmm. of orangey yellowish mm. tone anyway, um, just to save my eyes because I think it's really bright. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't notice if the colors were off. <laughs> I've also noticed, like, if if when when night mode is on, and if I'm looking at, for example, like Discord, which is an app that has a dark mode, but it's not like pure black. Mm-hmm. Um, that like it it looks weird. That just like the combination of this dark purplish gray and then like being tinted yellow. <laughs> uh, it's 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 a weird. It's it you know it's not like painful but it's just like what is, what am I looking at here? <laughs> yeah. I don't think that there is a word for this color that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the specs of this phone. So we've got the Snapdragon 845 processor, uh, four gigs of RAM. You can choose between 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage, um, and a new, I think, probably notable feature uh, this year is the Titan M security module, which um, is, you know, supposedly, like, improves the security of the phone by orders of magnitude, um, prevents, you know, like, decryption 
unless the you you have actually like uh the user has put in the passcode and you know it it prevents like software from from hijacking that process uh i of course have not thoroughly tested this feature because like <laughs> goodness gracious does that sound scary <laughs> yeah, yeah i um, i haven't either yeah. but um you know the next time that i go out of country i might <laughs> yeah just in case any I, tsa agent gets uh some power trip going on and wants to go through my phone for something yeah I don't know. yeah yeah, I'm I'm sure that like, you know, cuz they have the new, well not new, but like Android has had this like lockdown mode uh for a little while where you can tell it like to not allow anything to happen on the phone unless you actually like even the fingerprint sensor is disallowed until you put your, you know, pin or your pattern in. Um and I think this probably th- this like adds kind of a, a hardware protection layer to that. Mm. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> and you know, if if Ryan were here, I'm sure he would have some choice words for the Snapdragon 845. But like, I can't keep track of what the numbers. You know, what <laughs> what is Qualcomm's lineup, and what does any of this mean? Um, I do feel like four gigabytes of RAM is not as much as I would expect from a $900 phone. But uh, you know, what can you do? <laughs> I think it's fast enough for to do anything that I really need it to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm I can't really complain. Yeah, and and like the the usage case where I most often run into like oh man I wish that my phone had more RAM is like if I am you know playing some podcasts and I have Google Maps navigation going and I need to like switch to another app to you know like type out something or whatever. Um, th- like that is when I really start to notice that like oh yeah man my Nexus 5X just kind of kills one of those apps while I'm trying to work and you know oh dear. Um, I haven't had that happen a whole lot on the Pixel 3. I have noticed it once or twice um, but I, th- I think that their men- memory management has improved a lot since like you know 2015. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know much about the specs but i do know it it is really quick if you need to restart it it's it happens real that's fast. very true that yeah. is true and also like i love the new update uh process that that android uses uh where in order to update android it just needs to restart the phone so like there's no reason for me not to update android because it just happens in three seconds mm, yeah mm, there's still a good reason to put it off <laughs> All right, let's talk about the uh, physical aspects of this phone, the look and feel. Um, so for the the size of the phones, uh, the footprint, we have uh, 145.6 millimeters by 68.2 millimeters by 7.9 millimeters for the standard size uh, Pixel 3. And then the XL is 158 by 76.7 by 7.9 millimeters. Um, and unfortunately, like most people aren't used to thinking about those numbers, so you may have to look up like you know the physical size of a phone that you're familiar with. Um, I I in particular have been using phones that are you know about 140 millimeters by 69 millimeters for most of my life because I went from the Nexus 5 to the 5X to the Pixel 2, um, and it's it's remained pretty pretty constant. So. This this phone feels very like comfortable in my hands. Um, I I still don't think I would be able to bring myself to use an XL sized phone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I never never realize the size of my phone until I have another phone in my hand to compare. Like, mm. oh, that's that is different. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I I do occasionally feel the the bigness of the the XL. Like it does feel a bit unwieldy sometimes. So Mm -hmm. if larger phones do that to you, I could see this one doing that. But I don't know. I feel like I've adapted to it pretty well. I've only dropped it like four times today. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to say four times. I drop mine like all the time. Hence the case. I had to borrow a, an XL Pixel 1 um, earlier this fall. And yeah, I couldn't, I, I, couldn't even like type one-handed with that phone it was it was that bad (laughs) yeah i i don't know i like the 
the weight, the heft of the feel of the phone. I feel like it's mm-hmm. a very solid, well-made phone. Yeah, yeah, and for the for the weight there, we've got 148 grams for the standard size and 184 grams for the XL size, um, and that's actually something that I didn't realize it until I was looking at these numbers. But like, my phones have been getting progressively heavier every every time I buy a new phone, um, and I haven't noticed that's not been a problem. So I think I think my phone could probably still get heavier still, and I and it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it's only a problem if I, like, spend, like, three hours on my phone, you know, just, like, holding Mm. it over my face. (laughs) Um, But I shouldn't be doing that anyway because I shouldn't be on my phone for three straight hours. So (laughs) it's not a problem. But um, I did find – I got a pop socket at a conference, and I Mm. found that that to be very useful. Yeah, I just got my first pop socket recently, and I was going to ask if you guys had used them. I probably should to, you know – get in touch with the youth of today but (laughs) it's more ergonomic like it it literally feels better to hold the phone this way than Mm. you know get like the cell phone pinky finger thing yeah 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 i'm still trying to incorporate it into my holding of the phone because right now it just feels in the way as i try to do the pinky thing (laughs) so i'm doing both and i go this isn't helpful at all i do i i really really like the the glass uh, that they have on the front of the phone this year. Um, I don't know. It just feels like my fingers kind of glide over it a lot easier, especially while I'm while I'm gesture typing. Um, and then also like the the top and the bottom edges of the of the phone, kind of the glass has this subtle little like curve. You know, it curves away as it melts into the back of the phone, kind of thing. Um, huh. I guess and the, it does. Yeah, and I, and I. I definitely wouldn't have noticed this just by like, you know, just by feeling the phone with my hands, mm-hmm. but I noticed it because like the reflections along the top of the phone look totally different than the reflections did on the Pixel 2. Mm-hmm. And it just if it it feels like a much more expensive phone. <laughs> well. Just because of that like subtle little curve. I've got some news for you. It is a much is more a- expensive phone. <laughs> But no, oh, I do. Man. It does feel very like slick and like I do like the rounded feel. Like it's not something that you can really put a finger on besides like actually putting a finger on it. But <laughs> but it is it does like contribute to how the phone feels. And if I mm-hmm. like dial into it, I can notice that it it like feels like a slick experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what color options did you two go with? We had just black, clearly white, and not pink. I went with just black. Just black. Same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. I, so, okay. The, the name and convention is, you know, cute and quirky, just like uh, what they've been doing since the Pixel 1. Like um, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> so quirky. Uh, I do really wish that the the just black option had a cool, like, power button that was a different color, the way that the, let's see, I think the clearly white has, oh. like, this kind of pale blue power button, and the not pink one has, ooh, was it an orange? I don't remember. But they're, like, these really bold uh, power buttons that just, you know, are ooh. a nice contrast in color with the rest of the body of the phone. And they still haven't done that. They they Like, last year, I think they did that, but only for the XL versions. And this year they did it, but not for the black version. So I still have never owned a phone that has like a cool power button color. I kind of want that pink one now. The batteries that we've got in these phones are uh, 2,915 milliamp hours Mm -hmm. on the standard version and 3,430 milliamp hours. Um, And of course... We really just have to talk about how that translates into our everyday lives. <laughs> Does the phone's battery actually last uh, throughout the day? Um, I I personally am am quite happy with it, um, though. Like as always, since I bike all over the place and like I always have Google Maps and Strava recording, and I've got podcasts going and and whatnot. Like I have to have a a big giant external battery with me anyway. So I might not be the best person to ask. <laughs> Well, um, this phone does everything and more that I need to on one charge. Um, Mm -hmm. I get up in the morning and then I take public transit in and I try and stay off my phone 
But then um, I work in what's basically a giant Faraday cage because uh, I work in the basement of a very large concrete building. And so, and I also can't have my phone on me during the day. So it just sits there searching for signal all day long and that will drain the battery. But um, yeah. if I put it in airplane mode, it only goes down like 30% throughout the day. And I feel like that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mine lasts through the full day, and I'm listening to the podcast while I'm at work all day. And uh, nice. I think there was actually one day where it was not low enough when I was going to bed that I forgot to put it on the charger, and, <laughs> hmm. and it lasted through the night. I had to charge it at work the next day, so I had to make do with the not charging and listening to my phone at the same time problem. But that's another problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we we could talk about that right now as well. Um so so for charging, uh we have USB C with uh with power delivery. Um I I am quite happy with how fast it charges. It's about uh one percent of the battery per minute that it gains back. Um and then we also have wireless charging again. Uh which Google used to do back in the days of the Nexus 5, but then they took it away for some reason until until Apple brought it back into the limelight. <laughs> but yeah, so ports. Uh, Quentin, I, I gather that you uh, you wish that you had a headphone jack, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't miss it most of the time. It's just in specific scenarios that make mm-hmm. me feel like if only I had planned out better, which isn't the worst feeling. Like you could have prevented this with proper planning, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's annoying <laughs> to not have two ports to be able to do things. It can only do the one thing. The only situation that I found it to be a problem in is when I am driving in my car. Uh, I have an older car, so I don't have like Bluetooth or anything, mm-hmm. and. Um, I usually plug in my aux cable and play podcasts or music or whatever, Mm -hmm. and I can't do that anymore. And they do give you an adapter in the box, Um, but since I moved, I left it in the box, and I don't know where that box is now, so (laughs) I don't get to listen to anything but the radio in my car now, which is, you know, total first world problem. (laughs) Yeah, I um, the the biggest pain point for me in making the transition away from a headphone jack is that like even though it's been over a year because i had the pixel 2 which also didn't have a headphone jack uh i still occasionally forget to charge my bluetooth headphones overnight Mm -hmm. and so i'll be like in the middle of my commute in the morning and and it'll be like oh low battery and i'm like oh oh, there's no way for me to fix this right now (laughs) brutal (laughs) yeah um, but honestly, like, like for biking around, having Bluetooth headphones is probably better than having this wire that attaches me to my handlebars. Um, cause yeah. there's just, yeah, less, less chance of things going horrendously wrong. <laughs> Slightly. Yeah. yeah. I am worried. Uh, there's a point in all of my phone's histories that I have my headphones in and the, the cord catches on something and it just mm-hmm. violently pulls out the headphones, and then the headphone jack is never the same. Mm. It's like mm. a little bit, like I've got to rotate it every time I want to listen right or something, and I'm just worried that now with one port, I've got one port to mess up, and <laughs> <laughs> then I won't be able to charge my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I I am you know really happy with the fact that like, USB-C is the port that it has because, like, I firmly believe in in our USB-C future where I'll be able to, like, charge all of my devices via just, like, one cable. Um, But I am pretty mad at Google for, like, refusing to implement DisplayPort over USB-C because there is absolutely no way with this phone to, like, plug it into a projector over a cable and you know, like mirror the phone's display up onto the projector. That's just not a thing that is s- supported by the hardware of the Pixel Two or the Pixel Three, um, and it makes me really mad because, like, as a teacher, yes, I want to demonstrate things that I'm doing on my phone to my students because, like, I teach computer tech, and so the phone itself is the topic that I teach about sometimes. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's a really specific problem. <laughs> I remember um, my very first smartphone was the Droid X, and mm-hmm. it had a micro HDMI oh. port on it. Yes. That was awesome. Yeah, I have I have uh, the Nvidia Shield tablet that also has one of those. So maybe I should just start bringing my tablet to school with me. It's a solution for every problem if only you look hard enough. <laughs> How about the speakers? I mean, I guess they sound nice when I'm listening to music or podcasts in the shower, but like I didn't I didn't I don't play things on the speakers enough to be like, well, yes, hmm, these are clearly higher quality than the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm super duper happy that they kept the like uh dual front facing speaker design that they had in the Pixel 2. Um and somehow they made these ones like even louder than the Pixel Twos, um, so much so much so that like like okay, we were we were driving down to Iowa uh, right after Christmas, Why? and oh yeah, you know because that's where my relatives live, and well, if you so, have to, I guess. But yeah, so so you know, I I neglected to bring my Bluetooth speaker with me, which is usually what I use when I'm in the car because like it just has more oomph than like the phone speakers. Um, but I just like set my pixel three in a cup holder up front in this giant 15 passenger van and just crank the volume all the way up and like, oh yeah, the first three rows, uh, can all hear the music quite clearly. And I was like, this is, this is freaking awesome. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I'm very, I'm very happy with these speakers. They do, but the, the phone vibrates a lot if you're holding it and like playing stuff fairly loud through those speakers. Um, I don't. I can't tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like it's very noticeable. Yeah, the the Pixel One had the speakers at the bottom, and for some reason, mm-hmm. only one of mine worked. But I mean, it was convenient that I could like easily suppress the sound if something started playing I didn't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I could just move my pinky over the one place the sound was coming out, and I, even though it was janky, I kind of miss it. That's literally the thing that most people complain about, Quentin, is like, oh, I can accidentally cover this one speaker with my pinky. It's so terrible. Oh, no, it was the worst when I didn't want it to do that. (laughs) But I kind of miss having the ability to do it easily. (laughs) Oh, man. But I can actually hear this phone in my shower, as opposed to the last one. It was pointless to try to play something on the phone while I was in the shower. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, for buttons, uh, we have just three physical buttons. We've got the power button above the volume buttons, uh, all of them on the right side of the phone. Um, I do prefer having like the volume buttons on the left side of the phone, um, partially because like that just makes it easier to take screenshots because then you you know you you grip the power button and the volume down button, and if they're on opposite sides of the phone, then it's just easier. Um, but it's been a long time since I've managed to find a decent phone that had that configuration. Well, I mean, you can hold down the power button. I've been using that recently since that. Oh, one. yeah. Yeah. It comes with a software point. option now. I like it. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I had the issue. Maybe I, maybe I should get myself into that habit. I had the issue with my um, Motorola X4 or whatever it was. Um, mm-hmm. Where the power button was below the volume buttons, and you had to yeah. press the volume buttons and the power button to take a screenshot, and so you're like awkwardly using like, you know, two fingers, or you're using both hands. It was just really awkward to take screenshots. But now all I do is hold down the power button, and bada bing, bada boom, I'm in business. But I will say it did take me quite a bit to, for, like, retrain my hand to hit the volume buttons instead of the power button right because they're they're literally polar opposite yeah yeah Mm. top and bottom yeah um i don't really like the way that these buttons feel because like i don't know the the volume buttons have this like really glossy plastic finish um and like the i remember the pixel one had like the 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 power button was like a cool texture to like really differentiate it from the volume buttons um, I really liked that for like the two weeks that I was using a Pixel One. Yeah. Um, I I didn't recall that while using the new phone, but now that you mention it, I do kind of miss that. <laughs> yeah. I also really miss like the Nexus Five had these ceramic buttons, and those felt super cool. 
uh, I've never seen a phone that did that ever since then. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I don't, it, they don't feel like mushy, you know, that doesn't feel like they're going to mm-hmm. break anytime soon, but like, I don't know. They're just not inspiring buttons. Do they have a less satisfying click to them? Yeah. Yeah, they do. The haptic feedback is less. Uh, kind of related to the buttons is active edge, um, which is the, like <clears throat> you squeeze the phone in order to bring up the, uh, Google assistant. Um, I really like it. I mean, it, I, I hate being in a public place and saying like, okay, the hot word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I just love being able to just like squeeze the phone to, to like surreptitiously bring up this, the Google assistant, um, I do wish that, like, you know, okay, so we all gave crap to Samsung for, like, their dedicated Bixby button that you couldn't uh, remap to be any other, like, voice assistant or anything. Uh, I th- I don't think we should let Google get away with, like, having this squeeze feature that only activates the Google Assistant and you can't choose to make it a shortcut for anything else. Um, Did we all give crap yeah. to Samsung for that? Uh, well, I definitely <laughs> did. <laughs> just feel like you're putting words in my mouth and I've never heard of Bixby. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a butler. That's my point exactly. Uh, is <laughs> they tried to push this feature on us that nobody cared about. So so you said you use it when you don't want to say the the words to activate the assistant. Um Yeah. Do you, so do you type in on the Google Assistant? Uh you you can, but I don't do that very often. Okay, so you feel weird saying the words, but then you feel fine saying like set an appointment for blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah well, I guess the <laughs> the the ultimate point here is that I don't use the assistant very often because I okay. just prefer to use my phone like a like a, you know, like it's 2016 yeah. instead of 2018. But yeah, uh, that's me being an old man. Yeah. I, I that's the only point I had against the the squeeze thing is like I can't envision a scenario yet, maybe it'll come up in my future, where I want to use the voice thing, but not, like, any situation where I wouldn't want to activate it by voice, I would also be in a Mm. situation where I wouldn't want to say things out loud anyways. Well, okay, it it is kind of important in my house, because, like, 50% 50% of the rooms in my house now have Google Homes in them mm-hmm. uh, because Google just kept throwing them at me for free last year. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, I mean, like, literally, we, we started going, like, where are we going to put this next one that's coming in the mail? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, like, if, you know, if you say the hot words out loud, no matter what, like, the the google home devices will take priority instead of the phone so if Mm -hmm. i want to use my phone yeah okay that makes sense i kind of miss uh coming from the moto i miss they had this feature where you could shake the phone a couple times and the light would turn on and that's super useful and i don't have that on this one i don't think and it makes me sad yeah no the the chop chop yeah (laughs) yeah the chop chop and that and like Motorola has been in, in integrating that into all their phones all the way from like you know my dad has the had the Moto G3 uh and that had the the chop chop and like the twisty twist and the um I sh- I should be on Motorola's marketing team honestly <laughs> The Pixel 3 is IP68 rated so it is fully dust resistant and um for water, I believe it's like, you know, you can submerge it up to like a meter or three meters or something like that of water and it should be fine. Um, and that's the definitely the best rating that a Pixel device has had so far. Um, I think IP68 is the highest that we typically see from any phones. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. You know, I have to remember what the Moto was because it was marketed as waterproof. Mm-hmm. And I did not feel bad about grabbing it with like wet hands when I needed to change a song in the shower or something. So, uh, but I've been a bit more careful around water with this one just because, you know, you can never be too careful around water and electronics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a couple of gripes. Um, well, I got one big gripe. Um, they took away my notification light. I'm so sad. <laughs> it's terrible. 
Mostly, mostly I'm mad about this because like the notification light is one of those things that I have been lording it over iPhone users for years is like, oh, look at me. I've got an Android phone. I've got this fancy notification light. It does different colors when different apps send me notifications. I'm I'm so cool. Um, But, you know, honestly, (laughs) since we have like an always on display that just shows you the icons, like there's no reason to have a notification light. So fine. You can take it away, I guess. Uh, I didn't like the notification lights. I always turn them off. Oh, I probably should have seen the writing on the wall because like for the last couple phones that I had, like Google had the notification light turned off by default and you had to actively seek it out. <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. Um, I, I really like the fingerprint sensor on this phone. Uh, the, the Pixel 2 that I had, and I'm not sure if this is like universal to all Pixel 2s or if my particular unit was just this way, but like it was it was very bad at detecting like fingers that were slightly damp. And I tend to have kind of clammy, sweaty hands. So Gross. like qu- <laughs> Yeah. My wife complains about it all the time. Um, <laughs> well, I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> clammy hands. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the Pixel 3 is much better at um, detecting my fingerprint now than, than the Pixel 2 was. Um, yeah. It's better than uh, the Pixel 1 because I had the same okay, problem good. where it would, it just was very particular, like super particular. So I I thought that I wasn't going to be able to like test the camera very much, but um, luckily I, I happened to get this phone like right before the holiday season, so... Everybody else in my family's cameras suck, so I ended up taking a lot of pictures at like family events. And I really like this camera, you guys. Dude, this camera is amaze balls. It makes me so happy. I literally hated the Moto X4, um, just because the camera was like so bad. And this mm-hmm. camera is so amazing. It makes me so happy. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's like. I mean, coming from like a Pixel 2 or a Pixel 1, I think both of those had uh, really good cameras as well. So I think uh, Quentin and I probably aren't quite as blown away by it as as uh, as you are coming from the X4. Um, but yeah, no, man, I like I like this camera a lot. Um, they finally, so DxO Mark finally actually gave this camera a score. Uh, it's uh, it got 101, which isn't the highest ever but uh it is up there like i feel like if you get you know any flagship phone these days you're probably going to be happy with the camera Mm -hmm. um certainly can explain why i was unhappy with my mid-range camera phone yeah yeah um so let's talk about like some of the specifics that this camera does um First, the the resolution, uh, it's shooting at 12.2 megapixels for the rear-facing camera and then 8 megapixels for the front face, uh, front-facing face camera. Um, and they, they packed a whole bunch of, like, special cool modes into this camera that, that are hardware-based. Um, actually, some of them aren't hardware-based. So, uh, night mode is a new one. Um, and this actually... My Pixel 2 did get a software update that enabled night mode, so this one isn't specific to the mm-hmm. Pixel 3. Um, and I don't remember... Uh, I, I read about like some of the, the software magic that they were doing in night mode to make it work, but I don't remember all the specifics. But basically, it just, you know, like, pictures in dark areas will look quite a bit better than you expect if you're using night mode. Um, I don't remember if it's using, like... HDR or what, uh, what, what things it's doing, um, but it's some, it's some software magic. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Moto X4, I hated it because it would take literally forever between me hitting the camera button and the shutter like actually clicking, mm. and so I would miss what I was trying to get a picture of because it was just gone by the time I got there. Um, so I like the fact that it's very responsive and quick and, and snappy and willing to take the picture of what I actually am trying to capture. Yeah, that's a really good point. Cause like probably more important than just like the quality of the pictures that a camera is taking is will this camera actually take the pictures when you expect it to, um, motion photos, uh, those Quinn, are you, cool. you, would, yeah, those are fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like, uh, I think you can you can set it to either like always take them or to just like choose when is a good photo to take a motion photo. I haven't 
really been able to figure out what criteria it uses for like the auto version. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it does motion photos. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. I just hate that I can't like share them in a text with people. Like mm-hmm. I got a pretty cool picture of the subway car coming into the station with like the beautiful sunrise behind it. And it looks so great. And I wanted to share it in a text message and you can't. It was just a picture of a train. whoop de doo Yeah, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember. So, so Savannah had a motion photo that she wanted to upload somewhere and she figured out how to turn it into a GIF fairly yeah. easily. But then she had the problem, the problem that like this GIF was so enormous, like it was like 50 megabytes or oh. more. And so like the, the website that she was trying to upload it to refused the file. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you know, you can you just never can win, I guess. Yeah. Um the so so you know how most uh phones these days are coming out with like two cameras on the back or three cameras on the back or whatever. Um Google decided that no, what we really need is two cameras on the front instead of the back. Uh they the reasoning behind that being, um, okay, we can have one camera that has like a normal field of view, and then the other one, instead of being a telephoto, is going to be a wide angle lens so that you can fit more people into a selfie. Um, I wasn't expecting this to be useful for me, but like I've actually used this several times since getting the phone, um, particularly on Christmas morning. I can't say that I've noticed it, but I do really appreciate the better quality cameras on the front. You mm-hmm. know, I don't look so grainy and awful. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing the camera can do about my double chin, but um, I really appreciate the better quality. Yeah, what I really need is like a camera that can help me figure out my angles. Because like supposedly that's a thing that you're supposed to know is know how to take good selfies of your of yourself oh yeah yeah your chin has to be up and you can't look left or something i don't know makes your face look fat i don't know something about that yeah um i really like that the camera lets you take raw photos um as a a bit of a photography snob uh i (laughs) i need to have that as an option um Luckily, like the 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 processing that the phone does on the photos is usually like exactly what I want the photo to look like anyway. Uh, so like I don't need the raw photos most of the time. Um, but like you know I've got 128 gigabytes to spare, so like why not take some raw photos? Right. Yeah. So I'm like an influencer on Insta, so <laughs> I have to apply these special filters before I can put them on the gram. Uh, so, um, yeah, for the most part, I just put a a special filter on an app called Visco before I upload them to on, Mm. to the internet. Um, so that's where all of my special effects come from. Yeah. Do you use the raw photos for that or is that just like, no, that's, that's just JPEGs with the, the standard HDR on it. Sure. Um, I found that it looks pretty good anyway, but it just adds the extra brightness to it that makes it pop. And look, yeah. look really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, this really, I guess I should really only worry about the raw photos if I'm like taking pictures at a wedding or, you know, something like that, where I, I really want to be able to like exposure correct things if I need to. Um, for for most day-to-day stuff, I don't really need it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, supposedly the autofocus slash like white balance reticle. So when you like, you know, you tap on a spot in, in, uh, in the viewfinder to tell it like, oh yeah, this is where I want you to focus on. Um, that can now follow objects as they move around in the viewfinder. Um, they demoed this with like a dog running around, uh, and I haven't tried it. I tried it just now. It works pretty well on this lamp at least. So that fast moving lamp. <laughs> well, I'm I'm moving a little bit. <laughs> Got to watch out for those lamps. Well. Um, and then Top Shot is another. Uh, I I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this one's a, a hardware specific feature, um, only available on the Pixel Three, where it continuously is like taking pictures, um, and then like when you hit the shutter, it. Uh, it, it captures all of those um, frames that it took around that moment. Um, and the, the intention behind this is that, like, okay, let's say that you're trying to take a picture of something that happens, you know, really quickly, like like a, a, a whale 
like splashing its tail or something like that, right? And you, oops, I missed the moment, but like I hit the shutter, you know, just a split second too late. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to go back and like find one of these other shots that the that the camera automatically took, uh, and and get that picture that you actually wanted. Um, I did actually use this uh, like. For some reason, I was dumb and like I was taking group pictures and I neglected to double check to make sure, you know, to take like three different versions of this one group picture just to make sure that like, okay, do we have one where nobody's blinking and everybody's smiling and everything? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it did save my butt. Uh, but unfortunately, the the pictures that it takes that aren't like the exact moment that you hit the shutter, those pictures are all less than a megapixel. They're 0.8 megapixels. So like you're better off just making sure that you get good shots, but this, this can come in handy in a pinch. Yeah. And, uh, a thing, I think it's like a software thing, not specifically pixel three, but that Google lens, I did not realize Mm, mm -hmm. that that is pretty nice because I've been playing around with the camera as we're talking about it and just having these links automatically show up that are on the screen and being able to follow them on my phone is really handy. And I did not know that was a thing until just now playing around with it. Yeah, yeah. It's also like, um, I'm pretty sure that Google Lens serves as a QR code reader, which Mm. is uh, very, very important to have built into an operating system, a mobile operating system. And like Google has gone back and forth on like, yeah, we're going to include a QR code reader here. It's called Google Goggles. And (laughs) then taking that away and then like making it Google Lens. But it's only available as a beta if you have a Pixel 2 and yeah, dumb. Um, but it sounds like now it's uh, out of beta and it's actually a full release. So, yep. Yeah. You just have to know where to find it. It's built into the camera app instead of like its own separate thing. Yeah. I, wish... I think you can also get, I think you can also use it like through the Google Assistant. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So that bottom thing, that squeeze thing I said has no use is useful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. To get to there <laughs> <easily>. <laughs> <laughs> For software, of course, uh, this is a phone straight from Google, so it comes with the latest version of Android, currently Android 9 Pi, um, the stock version, so you don't have any ugly skins on top of it. Um, Daniel Poole and I reviewed Android 9 back in second opinion number 47, and we managed to talk about that for an hour and 45 minutes, so if you (laughs) want to listen to that, you totally can. (laughs) It's a pretty good one. Uh, as far as updates, uh, this is this is probably the main reason that I am attracted to the Pixel lineup more than any other Android phone is like, yes, you get day one software updates and security updates, um, and Google is guaranteeing that for three years, which, uh, if you ask me, is not long enough. Um, I, th- I really think that we need to start uh, like holding phone manufacturers to a higher standard um most android phones only like receive updates for like two years um and google google put forth a lot of effort uh in in what they called the project trouble to allow like updates to continue to come to android phones regardless of whether like qualcomm was still releasing drivers for their chips and everything but like what did google do with that oh we're going to do three years instead of two years now um we really need to go longer than that (laughs) yeah i say after three years of having this phone we start boycotting this phone. (laughs) i mean chances are what i'll do (laughs) if i still have this phone after three years um is i'll probably like put a custom rom on it or something mm. um hopefully lineage os is still going by that time and uh is still like getting good good software updates out for for phones i can pretty much guarantee i won't have this phone in three years from now yeah that, that's my usual mode of being careless with my phone <laughs> i seem to replace my phone every, about every two years now yeah that's mm-hmm. about my schedule yeah and it's and it's not an intentional schedule. I'm always like, I'm just going to keep using this phone until it's no longer usable. But like two years seems to be the cutoff point. <laughs> yeah, like the battery starts true. flagging and then you've dropped mm-hmm. it enough that maybe it's a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've got some special features with this phone. Uh, one of my favorites is flip to shh. 
That's that's the official name of the feature, uh, which is where like the phone will put itself into do not disturb mode uh, if you just turn it over face down on on a flat surface. Cool. I've not messed around with this. I have not noticed it doing that yet. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember if that's something that you have to turn on or if it's on by default. Um, How can I verify but, if it's down so I can't see that it's in? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll only um, know if someone calls me during that time, and by then it'll be too late. <laughs> well, I have my phone set to do not disturb mode for most of the time anyway, so yeah. like that's just not a feature that's useful for me. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I I kind of, so one of the changes that they made to Do Not Disturb mode is that, like, you no longer have separate tiers of Do Not Disturb. There used to be, like, priority only, and then alarms only, and then total silence. Um, and so, because when I'm, like, recording a podcast, I want this phone to be completely silenced. I don't even want it to be able to, like, accidentally play music or something. Um, that's what I have do not disturb set to is like absolutely no noises whatsoever. Um, and right now I'm taking a chance. I just have my phone face down. So hopefully it hasn't been making any noises. <laughs> the only thing that's been making noises on my side is a 12 pound chihuahua named Godzilla. That's peacefully slumbering on the couch behind me. <laughs> nice. That's a very good name for a 12 pound <laughs> chihuahua. Unfortunately, she does not come with a do not disturb mode, so she is on always <laughs> loud mode all the time. Have you tried flipping her over? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we no longer have the option to have the overview button. Um, so when they introduced Android 9, they introduced the option for like, I think it was for Pixel 1 and Pixel 2 users, where you could uh, get rid of that, you know, the square button over on the right hand side that you tap to get to like your, your recent apps list. Um, and instead have this weird like pill shaped home button that you'd like swipe up on, or you can like swipe sideways to go through your recent apps or whatever. <laughs> We no longer have that option. Uh, the pill-shaped home button is the only option. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan. I tried it out back when the Pixel 2 came out, and or when, when Android 9 came out, and I was like, no, I'm going to stick with the old way. It's faster, it's better. And now I don't have that option, so I just have to live with it. I actually like the switching apps with the like swiping left and mm -hmm. right, but I don't like trying to get to all the rest of my apps on the thing. It always feels clunky when I pull up and it does like a half pull up thing and then you have to do it again. Yeah, like the the animation that it plays is really clunky. Yeah, it looks it, like, like I did it wrong every time. <laughs> it's and it sometimes like it shows it'll show a different app as the most recent app than the one that is actually the most recent app for a brief like it'll flash that but then it'll like turn into the correct one. Um, it's n it's nowhere near as like smooth as Apple's iteration of this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, Google really really uh, did not do this very well. They tried to like uh, follow in Apple's footsteps, but they totally like just fell flat on their face. Have you either of you had a problem answering your phone calls before on the Pixel Three? Mm, no, I have. I don't not. think I have. Because there's been some times where I've been to go, I've I've gone to go answer the phone, and it won't let me swipe up. It just gives me kind of this like weird buzz. Oh. And then, like, it literally won't let me answer the phone call. It just says I miss it, even though I'm like swiping up to hit it. Hmm. Um. Hmm. So I have to restart the phone. Weird. Um, I did see I did see that there were an, a, a significant number of people who were complaining about like connectivity issues with the Pixel Three, um, but it doesn't sound like that's related to a connectivity issue. Yeah, no, it's definitely something in the software, and it hasn't yeah. happened for a couple of weeks now. So it's like a very it's like one of the only things that I really don't like about the phone is that one problem, but it hasn't mm. happened for a while, so I'm. Um, Thinking okay. I'm okay now? I don't know. It hasn't happened. And it didn't happen very often when it was happening. Maybe just like two or three times and I just restart my phone and call the person back. So it wasn't a problem. 
Yeah. But, you know, oh. not something that you want to have when you're, you know, trying to wait for recruiters to call you back about a job. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of answering the phone, uh, we we have a new feature um, where the, the Google, uh, what's it called? Call screening. Yeah. Where the Google Assistant, you can have your phone pick up the phone call for you and a robot will talk to the person who's calling you and ask them, like, why they're calling you. Uh, and that's, um, I have... I have done it to a couple of friends who have called me just for kicks. Um, mm. But I, I do legitimately like using this feature when like an unknown number is calling me. Um, yeah. I've only gotten spam calls that have gotten that feature. I haven't, like I could see my mom calling me while I'm at work and me not being able to answer and just like kind of what do you want <laughs> through robot. But <laughs> I have not had to use that feature yet. Has anyone used the 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 morning assistant? Thing? Morning assistant. No, I, I, I like it. Uh, you have it where like when you turn off your alarm, it can like do some things. Like it'll tell me mm. what the weather is, what my morning commute is gonna look like, and mm. then I have it set to play a news podcast. Ah, and yeah. No, my I I use the alarm on my watch. Uh, uh so yeah. Also, my wife would still be in bed when I'm getting up, so like, I, I don't want it talking to me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really like that, but for some reason, it will, it'll play the podcast just fine. But if I put my headphones after in after that, if I try to pause and play the other headphone or the other podcast app, because the Google podcast app is garbage, if, <laughs> yeah. once I'm listening to my own podcasts on that app, if I pause that podcast and then press play again it'll the google podcast will take priority away and start playing hmm. the end of that episode weird <laughs> and Man, the only thing you around confused it me is, just by talking about this yeah like like i'll hit play or pause and play and it'll just start playing the podcast from the morning mm. and so i just have to restart my phone every morning is the only way around it i've found because <laughs> i like i like getting the news when i wake up but yeah right if i forget it's pretty annoying <laughs> huh uh they took away the feature where you could unlock the phone with your voice um and i'm sure that there's a small subset of people who are going to be really upset about this but like i always had that turned off because i i you know it's, that's a huge security like flaw if you ask me like i don't want somebody to just be able to take a recording of my voice saying okay hot word and then you know, because there's tons of recordings of me saying that. <laughs> or they could synthesize your voice now mm -hmm. and play it, and you didn't even have to give it with your own voice box. Exactly, exactly. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> Am I really Ian Buck? How can you be sure? Yeah. Robots are really good nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might say that they're going to steal our jobs. You could say that. Sorry, that was a reference to the fact that I uh, am currently releasing an audiobook version of the of Robots Will Steal Your Job, but that's okay. <laughs> um, eSIMs. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about eSIM because that was unexpected and awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just so easy. Um, and I think, I, I don't remember what carriers this is available for, but uh, the three of us are all on Project Fi, so we definitely all had uh, that option. Um yeah, last last year with the Pixel 2, that was the first time I had the opportunity to do an eSIM, and I just instinctively tapped yes when I was setting up, and then immediately I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what if I, like, what if something happens to my Pixel 2, and I need to use a different phone, and, you know, now I don't have an ac a SIM card that's activated on my, you know, so I was kind of freaking out about it, um, but it it's not difficult to, like, reactivate a, a Google Fi SIM card, that previously was on your account, you know, um, the eSIM option just makes it super easy to like set up your Pixel phone without having to like swap SIM cards around. Um, so I th I don't think there's any like real downside to it. Yeah. It's a cool thing. It's really it neat. made set up a breeze. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I what is the authentication method there? Like, what is that? Is it just that I'm logged into my Google account? Went, eh, we that trust you. Is. I guess so, because <laughs> I I think that the one of the big points of of getting this eSIM technology going is like oh yeah we won't have to put these giant SIM cards into like watches that 
you know, have LTE built mm. into them. Um, and I, I don't know, like, what, like, how are you going to authenticate that, like, yes, I am the person who is supposed to have access to this data plan through this carrier? Uh, I'm sure that people who are much smarter than me are thinking about these problems, but, like, I don't know what the solution is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just assume it's secure with that Titan, Titan M security module. Mm, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> you're just told that it's secure and you accept that like, yeah that sounds right <laughs> uh all right final thoughts i think that this is definitely like it is the most expensive phone by far that google has ever come out with but it's also the phone that like feels the most like a premium phone and that like that extends past the phone to like you know they they included a few things in the box that they haven't included before or like they they had some USB C headphones in there. Unfortunately, the USB C headphones are garbage. Uh, I hated them. I tried them out for you know a day and a half, and I was like, no, thank you, never ever. Um, they hurt my ears, and they like let in a whole bunch of ambient sound, and I could not stand them. Um, but they also gave me some stickers, and I like stickers. <laughs> stickers are good. <laughs> Who doesn't like stickers? Yeah. Now I just have to make sure that like I don't lose this Nalgene for a good long time. <laughs> I feel you about the whole water bottle thing. Maybe that'll be like the reason that I get a new phone. It's like, oh, I lost my Nalgene. <laughs> I'm going to have to get another Pixel so I can get some more stickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know. It's pretty expensive, yeah. but I think it's been worth it so far. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm really curious to see how the OnePlus 6T fares because like that one is is well it's not down at the $400 price range that I love so much uh you know OnePlus is is still significantly cheaper than um than the Pixel phone is so I'm going to get uh, a student of mine who has the 6T on second opinion to review that phone uh in a couple weeks so um I I don't know I mean I I don't know if I can just recommend like an eight hundred dollar phone to people, I don't know. It's <laughs> if you know that you are going to be spending this much money on a phone, like I think that the Pixel Three definitely warrants consideration. That's for sure. But like, I don't know if I can recommend to most people buying a phone that is this expensive in the first place. It does That's... feel a little bougie. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah, it it does help solidify my position as like the person who takes all the pictures, though. So. Thanks for that. I mean, I got that going for me, which is nice. Now I just take like really awesome pictures of my cat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can post them on Visco? You know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one plus six T does look pretty good. I should have got that. Yeah. I mean Thumbs the, down. the, the <laughs> <laughs> The the thing is though that like as a Project Fi subscriber, like I also like can't even consider getting any phone that isn't one of like the five phones that Google is currently marketing as like, oh yeah, these are the fully compatible ones with Google Fi. If you get anything else, you're you're going to have terrible coverage. Yeah. So ugh. Yeah, I've been with the the Google phones since the nexus ones mm -hmm. and i haven't even considered switching off of the google phones so i didn't even think about not getting the pixel 3 it was just a matter of time <laughs> yeah yeah um there is one thing that i noticed uh while i was browsing through the wikipedia article about the pixel 3 uh is that they the warranty for the Pixel 3 automatically opts all of its users into an arbitration agreement, which means that we won't be able to have, like, a class action lawsuit if something really, really bad ends up happening with this phone. Like, I don't know, a boot loop problem, uh, similar to the one that, like, the Nexus 5X had. Um, and I don't know if this is something that, like, most phone manufacturers do or what, but, like, this feels like a very bad and, like, not good thing. Um so I guess I just have to hope that there's nothing wrong with this phone at, yeah. at like the structural level. <laughs> I mean, that's life in 2018. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just cross your fingers. We, Everything will be fine. 
we won't end up in we, the hospital. The student loans will all get paid off, and we won't. We'll all be able to sue Google. It'll be fine. Sure. Yeah. What could go it's, wrong? <laughs> it's happy 2019, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're so full of good cheer. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Any any other final thoughts about the phone? Mm. I say overall, I recommend it. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. happy with it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. Um, this has been a production of the Nexus TV. We are a network of technology-focused podcasts. You can find all of our shows at thenexus.tv, and you can connect with us on Twitter at uh, the Nexus TV. Gwen and Quentin, where can people find you guys on the internet? Yeah, I can be found at Fire Drill Podcast or at my blog, which is Fiery Millennials, which is double L, double N, dot com. And you can find me writing some superhero stories with Daniel Poole over at OK Google. I just wanted to activate everyone's phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so rude. Since we were avoiding it. Uh, but. It, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but my actual podcast is Double Issue, so go check check me out over there. I fully expect to hear a character that has literal clams for hands in the future. It was already written. <laughs> Uh, this episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of it if you want, as long as you link back to our original page, which again is thenexus.tv slash SO56. Uh, if you want to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can go to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you are able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused educational content, uh, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. And you can get a cool sticker if you support them. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that one on your water bottle? I put it on my bike, which seemed fitting. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> Uh, and I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. And uh, until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological convergence. convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why, every month on The Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player. <laughs>